Welcome back to Perspectives. Protesters chanting death to the Iranian President Rouhani have clashed with security forces in Iran's second largest city. Footage emerging on social media shows police using what appears to be tear gas to disperse crowds which were protesting against the soaring cost of living. In one case, people were heard shouting, leave Syria, think about us, apparently referring to Tehran's staunch support for its ally Bashar al-Assad. With me in studio, Iranian expert Meir Javadan Farmi. Meir, thank you for your time. Thank you. Give us a clear picture of just how dire the economic situation is in Iran as it stands. Well, it has been worse before, um, but right now the problem is that people were hoping that after the nuclear deal uh, and after many promises by President Rouhani, the situation is going to improve. It hasn't. Um, you know, the cost of living is increasing, and there's not much that President Rouhani can do to reform the economy because he needs the support of the regime and the regime is not giving him that support. Right, and you, you mentioned the 25 nuclear deal was it was thought to be, bring broad economic benefits to Iran. We haven't seen any of that uh, come to fruition. What's going on here? I think basically the problem in Iran is indecision. You have on the one, we need to have deep economic reform. Forget about Israel, you need to have deep economic reform like with other countries. Like in Israel, we also need it. But in Iran, the government is really stuck. Why? Because if you want to have deep economic reforms to open up the markets, you need the support of the regime. The regime, without it, you, you can't do it. But the regime is not going to do that because a lot of the different economic segments are in the hands of its supporters. So if it gets, gives it away, then mm. it's going to be endangered. Mm. So we have a situation of indecision, and meanwhile, the price of uh, goods is rising. And there was a very re recent interesting uh, survey, uh, research done by the BBC Persian, it showed that over the last 15 years, oh, sorry, over the last seven years, the disposable family budget in, in Iran is, uh, for, the, for the middle class has decreased mm. by 15 percent. And that's a lot considering the fact that uh, uh, President Ahmadinejad was ruling over uh, oil at its high price price. Right. Now, we mentioned earlier that this crisis in Iran is not new. You said it's actually been worse. So what prompted this protest today? Why now? That's what pro Ayatollah Khamenei should be worried. It's completely spontaneous. I have nothing else to say. It's spontaneous. What should he be worried about? That, that it's spontaneous. That people that could, are now... That they could take it further? That, that they could be more spontaneous. And today, the difference uh, today is that people have this thing. Mm -hmm. And people can take photos and people can take films and it goes viral. And what happens when it goes viral? Forget about Twitter followers. It inspires people to go out more. Sure. Because when people see that others are doing it in far away places, this is not a very... Po in Neishabur, not just Mashal Neishabur. But people see people are coming out, they see it, they become encouraged, and that because it's spontaneous, okay. these two are a combustible uh, mixture. So then how do you see this playing out in, in the halls of parliament with its leadership? Well, I think government is going to be under pressure, but then Rohan is going to push back and is going to say, if you don't let me do the reforms which I want to do, you're going to see more of these demonstrations. It's now up to Rouhani to leverage this, to get the regime to make economic changes, because he wants to make changes. Whether they're going to allow him to do it, it's unclear. Right. Now, we heard those uh, civilians calling for Rouhani to withdraw from Syria, uh, to, to think about them first. We all know this is not likely to happen. So how can Rouhani appeal to its citizens? Um, Rouhani, what he, Rouhani, look, to be completely fair, Rouhani has tried to improve the economy in many ways. They don't let him. It doesn't matter if you like him or not. They don't let him. He needs to make deep economic changes in Iran. There's a lot of different sectors of the economy. There's a monopoly rule. There are regime uh, organizations, you know, running big companies. There's so much corruption. He can't do it. The government can't do it. So all he can do is to push for change. And you know what? Counterintuitively, count these demonstrations help him. Because he can take these demonstrations and go to the regime mm -hmm. and says, if you don't let me make these changes, you're going to get more of this. Okay, very briefly, looking at the calls from Iranian uh, citizens to its leadership to withdraw from Syria, we know uh, what Israel's position is when it comes to Iran, and we know how Benjamin Netanyahu likes to use rhetoric to appeal to the citizens to, uh, I suppose, support his cause. Is this something that Israel could leverage off? This is not something we could leverage off, but I think for now what's the most important thing is that this is showing that people of Iran do not agree with the Syria policy because in their own country they have much bigger issues to, uh, to look into than, than, than people of Syria. Certainly. And not just people of Syria, the regime of Iran is supporting the biggest butcher in this region in, in its recent history, which is Bashar al-Assad. And people of Iran don't like butchers, especially one who has used chemical weapons. Let's not forget Iranian people were victims of chemical weapons of another butcher called Saddam Hussein. Mir Javadanfar, thank you for that insight. Thank you.